So hello everybody, I'm just going to show you now a bit about the art of drop spinning. This is a drop spindle. You can see it's quite a simple apparatus and I have spun that wall onto it. And that is just done by flicking the spindle like a top, like a spinning top. Just spin it. Like that and as you can see do you spin it drops down which is no doubt where its name came from and I just continues to do that so it's twisting the hairs or the wall of the sheep together to make it kind of a string and when you've done enough to hold between your arms, you set it down, I set it down on my leg and flick the knot off and wind it on to the shaft. Then you need you need to leave enough to go from one end to round the bottom and up to the top and over your finger and slip it on there in a half hitch. And that is how you use a drop spindle. Now there's obviously quite a lot more to it than that and uh, I'll be showing you a bit more now about how to start it all but it really is a very very simple process and uh, more simple than perhaps you realize when you're watching somebody using a wheel, a spinning wheel, that actually people use this method for thousands of years. Uh, that's how it's done, round the bottom, up to the top, over your finger, like that. Now, obviously, if you were doing that, and just spinning and spinning like that, uh, what would happen when you let go of the wool would just come undone. So, in order to stabilise it, to stop it unwinding, you need to make two lots of wool, like that, and then you need to ply them. And this is the plying spindle, which you can see is longer, has a longer shaft than the others, because you have to put all this wool from these two onto this one, and that's done by twisting them together. The other way round. So you you go from like when I finish this one, I will be. These are all uh, clockwise spun. I will be plying anti-clockwise, and that will lock the lock the twists together. And then you get this. So if you look there, you you can see. You can see there. Quite easy to see, I think. So they're plied. That's what the plying means. And you see three ply or floor ply on the wall in a shop. It means how many threads there are twisted together. But you actually only need two to stabilize the wall. Now that's a that's a skein that I've made there. And that's the contents of those two spindles, and that's about 500 grams of wool, so it's a good big skein. And when you've done maybe four of those, you could make one of these, it's a waistcoat, man's waistcoat, that one. And there's that one, which is the other, so it's the way the wool is. When it's naturally coloured. So there's quite a lot of processes to go through to get to the garment. But the nice thing about wool is it's never wasted. Because if that one of those garments got a hole in it, I can unpick it, wash the wool and use it again. Now what you'll find with the uh, fleece is that it's oily. 
It has lanolin in it. And it's lovely if you're a gardener. It's really good for your hands. Um, we leave it like that. It's called in the grease. We leave it like that. We spin it like that. We ply it like that. And then once we've skeined it, we wash it and take out the lanolin and any other bits and pieces that are in there. And it will come up a nice bright white. And that one is actually really white and black. So that's the basis of using a drop spindle. And what I'm going to show you is how it starts. So this is one that has no wool on it yet. You can see it's just what they call a spindle wall, this, this circular bit, and that's the, the spindle shaft there. And this is called the starter thread. So it's actually two piece, it's, it's one piece of wool doubled over and tied on here. And then you just tie a knot in the other end. And that's where you start spinning your own wool there. And I actually, after I had bought this one originally, I didn't ha actually realise when I bought it that I needed another one the same and a plying one. So I made this one from a toy wheel and an old shaft of a, a spoon that was broken. And uh, the, ply, the plier is also like that too, with a toy shaft, because it's, it's about the same weight, it was, ha it was handy. But this one here, a friend of mine made, in fact she's made a couple of them for me. That one's got some wool on it. And uh, I'll show you how it started now. And this other wool I have here, this is a slightly coarser wool than the Jacob's sheep wool and um, it's quite nice and I'm going to use it for twill or wool string. So it's going to be quite nice to use for that because it's a little bit coarser and uh, It'll be nice and strong. So this is how we start, right? So there's the spindle. You go round the bottom of the spindle, like that, up to the top. Put it over your thumb, over your thumb towards the spindle. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that, right? And then put your thumb on top of the Put your thumb on top of the spindle and slip it down. Right, so it's what's called a half hitch. And then you take the fleece and put it between those two ends of the starter thread. And this is where it always takes a little bit of ingenuity to get it going. You hold them all, th all the, the two pieces of the starter thread and the piece of the fleece behind, between your fingers like that and you, you spin. And then you just draw it out. And you have to do it quite quickly just to make sure that it doesn't drop off. I'm not worried about making this very fine because I'm going to use it for string. So just keep doing that. And you need to keep it spinning just for where you are until you get it enough of that off there. And then you can take it off and wind it round you see that winding it round the shaft till it catches and then back up again to the top and then you just keep going like that there you go it's, it's not really difficult it's just a little knack and the best way to do it with the wool is the spin is here between the bottom the top of the shaft and your finger where you hold it where you pinch it at the top so when you spin that and you hold it there you pull the wool above your fingers and then when you let go the spin moves up the wool so you don't want to pull it too hard because then it will come to bits. 
just gently, it's almost like stretching it and just keep the spin going. Uh, just keep an eye always on the spinner because if it starts to spin backwards, which it does, um, it'll undo what you did and uh, it'll all fall to bits. So just keep it spinning. As I say, it's a bit of coordination, but it's not actually that difficult once you get the hang of it. Now, see, there we have enough probably just to, again, you slip the knot off the top. It's only a half hitch, so it comes up quite easily. And then you, it doesn't matter which way round, which way you turn the, the shaft to wind it on, that's not important. And leave enough to go round the bottom. I'll just a bit more, wind that one a bit more. Around the bottom, up to the top, over your thumb, put your thumb on top of the spindle and slip it down on and pull that up and that tightens it so it won't slip off the top. So I'll just keep doing that for a bit and you can get a hang of what I'm doing there. There we go, a bit more. And you'll find as the spindle gets more wool on it, gets heavier, it'll spin with more momentum. So you, it's, it becomes a little easier as it gets heavier. And again, you stop, twist it on your knee. Flick it off the top, take it off the bottom, and wind it round the shaft. And then back to the bottom, round the shaft, up to the top, over your thumb, and onto the top of the shaft. There. That's a nice knot. So, I'll just do it again. So that you can get the hang of it. So you just keep stretching the wool there. As I say, hold it here and pull and then let the spin go up. See, hold it here, pull and let the spin go up. And then take it off again, take it off the bottom, wind it round the shaft and round the bottom and up again. And over your finger or your thumb and onto the top again. There we go. The reason that I had started making twill was because I needed something soft to string up my tomatoes with. And last year I had this this uh string that was made of something quite sharp and it, it seemed to scratch the the stems so this year I've got my own I thought this was such a great idea and then you need a bit more as you see I've sort of got to the end there now the question is how do you join it on well you need to just pull out the wall like that and separate all the little bits that are stuck together and if you see any bits of seeds, let them drop through. And then you've left, you leave a fluffy bit at the top and you hold the fleece that you have in your hand with that bit. And then you just start again and, and spin and they'll join on quite easily. And on you go again. There we go. So. The next video I'll show you how to ply and how to wash the wool. Hope you've enjoyed that.